Hello, welcome to Access. I'm Rob, and joining us is Dave. Hello. And this is Final Fantasy Type Zero HD, which I've said very slowly to make sure I get it right. Yeah, it's one of those classic Final Fantasy names. It is, and this is six things you need to know about Final Fantasy Type Zero HD. And we'll start with uh, a question that I'm sure is burning in quite a few brains, including yours. Yeah. What is it? What is it? Well, I'll tell you. Please do. It is a remake of okay. a previously Japan-only PSP Final Fantasy game. Right. Which is part of the Fabula Nova Crystallis trilogy of Final Fantasy games. Okay. Which include Final Fantasy XIII. Right. Final Fantasy Type Zero, which was originally called Final Fantasy Ajito XIII. Right. And Final Fantasy Versus XIII, which is now Final Fantasy XV. Right. Okay. So I hope that's cleared it up for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so it used to be a Japan-only PSP game. Now it's had an HD remaster on PS4. Wow. And here it is, looking really quite sumptuous yeah, for a it game looks, that used to be a PSP title. It looks fantastic for considering it used to be a PSP title. Look at the character models. That's excellent. It is excellent. It's ace. Did you play it on uh, PSP, Rob? I didn't, because it only was in Japan. I know, but I know that, you know, the very hardcore fans, which I thought you were, probably imported it or something. I didn't import it, no. But I suppose you can't speak Japanese, and that might have been no. a bit of a problem. No, I wouldn't have understood the story, Dave, and that's pretty crucial, as a hardcore Final Fantasy fan would know, Yeah. to the whole Final Fantasy experience. So there. Well, okay, fair enough. Well, there's um, that's one thing cleared up, Rob. But there's still, I've got to be honest, there's a lot of things I still <laughs> Five don't know specifically. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so if you could help me out, yeah, we're really good what's at maths. What's the What's the other thing I need to know? Uh, the next thing is Final Fantasy Type Zero HD is quite violent and dark, as you can see from this dying man screaming about how he doesn't want to die. And usually Final Fantasy games are very colourful, they're bright, they're magical. I mean, there are very dark themes quite yeah. often, but yeah. in Final Fantasy X, for example, when you kill a monster or a person, they just turn into some fireflies and float away yeah. and make a really nice noise. But in Type-0 HD, they don't do that. They scream and loads of blood comes out of them. Oh, like God. what would happen for real if yeah. you hit someone with a sword. Right. <laughs> I'm glad you cleared that up. I mean, wasn't that like a dying chocobo? At let's the not as well? let's not talk about that. Oh man, this is that is. It, I've got to admit that is. This isn't uh, so how I think of Final Fantasy. It's a big departure from tra for, from traditional Final Fantasy. It's very gritty. Themes. It's very gritty. It's very dark, uh, but it does suit the tone of this game, which is all about war. And there's Odin looking amazing. I don't know who that is, but he does look. He's cool. a summon, a summon monster who's been in loads of Final Fantasy games. So what's the next thing? The next point is the combat. So not only has the tone and the the colour palette changed, but the combat isn't like traditional Final Fantasy combat. Although in the later, in the more recent Final Fantasy games, it has been veering more towards real-time combat. Yeah. Um, but Type-0 HD really kind of takes it to the next level. In it, it just is real time it is real time but with little elements of RPG style strategy like you've, you've got 14 characters you can choose from wow and you can take th any three into a mission I think they're all named after like a deck of cards right okay um, so you've oh, got yeah, seven, ace nine. you've got one, one through to ten and then jack queen and king Right, okay. And each character has their own weapon types, their own specialities. Uh, this guy I'm using at the moment has a lance. Um, but as I say, there's, there's a tactical element involved as well. I don't know if you can see, when you lock onto something, like occasionally the target reticule can change to a yellow colour or a red colour. And if you time your attack perfectly, like I did there, um, if you, hit, if you hit an enemy when their reticule is red, you kill them instantly. If you hit an enemy when their reticule is yellow, you do critical damage. Yeah, that's right. So it's all about timing. Um, so there's a, usually, there's... as a Final Fantasy fan, I'm not used to having to. I'm not used to having my dexterity tested. Yeah, it's all about you know tactics. There's loads of tactics actually, especially with that many uh, characters to choose from because. You know, like this guy Ace with his deck of cards. He's like a I mean, ranged attack. I love attack. his cards. Like you can, you can just chuck cards, which is a long range attack, or you can cut the cards, which, which is really cool. Give you a bunch of different effects, and you can draw up to four cards. And I'm not doing a very good job at explaining it, but you can. You basically you pull maybe, four you cards get out like of a the heal deck. Spell. It could be a heal spell. It could be a critical attack. Yeah, it could be, it could be a stop. Any number of those things, and also the dodge button, which I'm utilizing here against this boss. 
Yeah. Look how well I'm playing, by the way, Dave. I know, I was impressed, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I'm not even going to pretend I wasn't. But there, there is a lot a lot of tactics because... Uh, a lot, a lot of tactics because... Um, a lot, a lot, a lot. You know, the, of the, the different character types, for instance, Ace, as I was saying, he's got his cards are a ranged attack, which is great for staying out of trouble, but it means times like this where you've got a critical hit, it's more difficult to time it because yeah. by the time you've seen it and pressed it, the critical hit might have gone away and then you've just got a normal yeah, so hit. So you've kind so. of got to learn the timings and anticipate when it's going to go yellow and chuck it and chuck the cards beforehand and also changing characters mid fight is an ability which uses some of your ability power so you can't just keep doing that to keep alive what's the next thing rob um what is the next thing dave it's the world, the world map. map oh yeah the world map um now this is something that hasn't been in a, in a final fantasy game for ages since Why not? Final i know fantasy, how much you love world maps. since final fantasy 9 i think um final fantasy 12 was more like an open load of hubs big hubs yeah uh, Final Fantasy 10 was just a road Final Fantasy 13 was again just a road um, and we've gone open again for Type 0 HD which is really exciting you know what comes with world maps random encounters random encounters I saw you just running around the map just not towards anything into here are in some particular. flans you don't know what flans are Dave but they're like are they those blue guys jelly type things they're they, my favourite they ones they come in different elements those are I think they're water flans or ice flans I prefer a flan so I was very excited and evil eyes they're a traditional Final Fantasy character there are bombs in there cactors yeah I know you don't know what I'm saying Dave, not at all but Final Fantasy fans will be will be excited that there's a world map and random encounters yeah, it's just a cool throwback to the series history you can catch them unawares as well and you can have the opportunity to go to you know nearby fights if, if that's happening and stuff like that this is the next thing Rob and it's, it's nice on the eyes. Just how nice it is on the eyes. Uh, let's I mean, just take a moment again to remember this was a PSP game. It was a game. PSP game. And if you remember, PSP games looked almost as good as PS2 games. Yeah, that's, you know, it's pre-PS Vita. Like, it's, it's the handheld before Vita, which has really good graphics now. Yeah. Like you say, it was, it was you know, aiming to be as good as a PS2 game. Yeah, and now you look at it on PS4... I mean, it doesn't look like a full-blown PS4 game no, by any stretch not. of the imagination, but it looks at home among the PS4 HD remasters, certainly. You, you're in the world, like, you, you know, it's not... It doesn't... Sometimes you the see old games... The character models are the character models from the original game's cutscenes. Yeah. Um, and they are now the character models you get to control in-game. Which explains why they look so nice, yeah. because um, they really do. It's like, sometimes you play old games and, and it can sort of take you out of the experience a little bit because the graphics are, aren't aren't up to much but this was just you know beautiful totally art style and it, if you were worried about it being too dark and gritty here's the chocobo ranch yeah which brings you on to the last skies, the last which point. brings me on to the last point. chocobo which isn't really a thing you need to know really well yeah, i guess it is chocobos well you, you were very excited them. when you when you could do this so i assume it's important to some people oh i just i love it it just screams final fantasy a lovely, lovely chocobo. And this is just the you chocobo farm. I'm just at the chocobo farm and I decided to get on the back of a chocobo and just ride it round and round and round. But apparently you can take the chocobos out into the world apparently you can. later in the game. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. Well, there you go. There are six things you need to know about Final Fantasy Type-0 HD. Comment, like and subscribe. Let us know if you're excited about the game and make sure you subscribe because we might have some videos on some other Final Fantasy games coming up soon possibly called Final Fantasy 15. <gasps> <gasps> Bye. Bye.